Hi everybody. Um, I am going to make you a little video today on what to do next for this project. Um, so after you have all of your pieces woven together, what I would highly recommend doing at the bottom after you've taped that last one in, and just so you know, I only got to number seven. I actually have three more that didn't fit, and that's perfectly fine. So you don't need to like try to squeeze them in. Um, I have just a little slack at the bottom, and I'm not going to try to force that next one in. This works perfectly. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and tape around like that, and just a. I I'm actually going to do it on all of these these end pieces that are sticking up, just so that I know my piece isn't going to come apart. Um, so we'll do all of these just like that. pieces falling out. They're obviously not going to fall out on that end because that side is kind of secure, but this side, oh, we don't want it to bust open and all fall apart, especially after we kind of move on today to that next step. I'm just going to actually, I'm really going to tape all of these. If you have clear tape, you could also use glue and just put a little squeeze of glue or a bit of glue stick between each. This is just going to ensure that your piece stays together. Um, like that okay so that's going to sort of be our background for this piece we'll end up eventually putting it on black paper I think which is going to look really nice and I'll give that to you in class um, but you can see just all the color and kind of pattern I love that I can see the yellow sort of checkerboard on this side and then a little bit up here as well um, it's very Andy Warhol and don't be bothered by this the fact that this isn't woven um, in the end, if you wanted to, you could just cut that, but just leave like a tiny little gap. Um, but I'm not going to worry about it yet. That'll be kind of a design choice you make um, at the end. So I'm going to put this to the side for now. What I'm going to tell you about next is creating bubble or block letters. So for this project, we are going to be um, using onomatopoeia. Um, an onomatopoeia you may know about from English class, and what that is is a word that sounds a lot like um, the word it's trying to express. So words like words like boom, crash, zoink. Um, those are all great words. Um, I think Roy Lichtenstein used a lot of those in his work. So if you can remember one that you really enjoy, I'm going to post for you a great. Kind of list um, within the assignment that you can look at that's going to have words that are on monopia. So let me just situate myself so I'm not at a funny angle here for you. I usually draw at an angle so I'm going to sit at an angle so you can see. Um, so what I'm going to do um, to show you how to create bubble or block letters is I have my bubble here and then my block here. And you may already know how to do this, um, but if not, I'm going to show you some easy ways to create bubbles. So a bubble letter looks more like a circle, and a block, when we think of block, it looks more like a square um, or a rectangle. So you really want your letters to sort of reflect that. And I think you want to think about your word, too, and what type of word it is. If it's a word like... Um, that has more of a heavy feel to it, like, I don't know, wham, that feels more block to me than a word like whisper, which feels more like a bubble. So maybe think about which one um, works best with your word that you're planning on using for your onomatopoeia, um, and then you're just gonna kind of practice um, with one or the other, or both, and see which one you like better, um, which one sort of matches up with your word. So if the word that I want to use is zoom, okay, I'm actually going to use this one. I'm going to make it more block. So to create a block or a bubble letter, what I like to do first is just draw in my letter as simply as I can, whatever letter I'm using. And for this one, you're just going to do an outline of the letter all the way around. But when you get to a corner, you're just going to make it crispy. You're going to make that turn um, to kind of 
do that if you want on your Z, or you can just bring it out as a triangle. Um, you're just going to make those turns very sharp. And that's how I would create my Z. And then I would probably go back with an eraser and just get rid of that really light Z that I first put in there, just like that. Um, if I were creating a bubble letter Z, I would do it a little bit differently. I would start the same way though. And then what I would do is I would make those turns a little more smoothly. Like that. And that's going to give you more of a bubble. Okay, so it's a little smoother around your corners. Um, so when we think about our word, if I think about the word Zoom, I think about being on Zoom calls, but I also feel, about, I, I think about, you know, things moving pretty quickly. So I may also decide to kind of write my word in, in kind of a Zoomy, Zoomy? That's not really, that's not really a word, but I'm going to use it here. I want it to kind of be, A little more spread out and maybe there's maybe I could do a little something like this where maybe the top and bottom of my letters I'm just gonna give them like something a little extra to make it look like it's zooming um, and then I can still make it into a block or bubble letter so I'm going to then sort of outline even with those little tails on my letter That reminds me of the cue, so I may have to go back and kind of look at that and make sure that I can get it looking like O's with tails and not Q's. Because that would be a strange word. So let's see. Once I'm done with this. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is maybe just think about my Z looks fine. It looks like a Z. My O's use a little work so they don't look like cues. The M's okay. I don't mind the M. Um, so here, one thing that maybe I could do is take these little feet that I added, the little zoom feet, and maybe just make them a little zoomier. Like that. looks less, I think, like a Q now. Um, maybe it just needs a little bit on the top, too. And maybe, maybe I can make some of these tails on these letters also do that same sort of like, almost like there's fire behind it. It's going so fast. Let's see how that looks. That's pretty good. Okay, so... Um, that's what I'm going to move on with. I want you to sketch out some ideas. Think about how you can make your word reflect the word that you're trying to illustrate. So you're really like, it's almost like you're illustrating the word into what it sounds like. When you're done with that, what I want you to do is I want you to draw it out on one of these pieces of cardboard. So um, I might first just so my spacing is right. Just kind of draw in my letters like that first, and then go ahead and get my sketch so I know I'm doing this correctly. Let me actually make Overlap my O just slightly. Go around to this one. Go make that hole a little smaller. Ooh, I don't like that. See? It's okay to change your mind on something. I think I'm actually just going to leave my O's as is. And I'm just going to make my Z and my M. ones with the tails. Just leave those middle ones. 
cubes the way they are because I just, I don't want them to look like cubes. Brown makes mistakes while she's working. There we go. Okay, so now I have Zoom written um, on one of my rectangular cardboard pieces. I'm just going to go in and erase that original uh, lettering so that I don't see that anymore. thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a black marker. You can use a Sharpie, you can use um, a Crayola marker, you can really use like a pretty thin pen and just kind of make it a nice thick outline. But what I'm going to do next is to save this for next week. I want you to save this for next week and I also want you to save all of the scrap for next week. Okay, so don't throw any of this away. I highly recommend taking it all. If you have your sketchbook at home, just taking it, putting it in your sketchbook like that and leaving it on your desk or wherever there is a safe place in your house so nobody throws away what you're working on because next week we're going to talk about adding color to our, our word here, and then we're going to be cutting this out. Um, so that's going to be part of your remote assignment next week. Okay, so you want to make sure you keep this somewhere safe. All right, um, and that is it. Once you have that done, just, just click turned in on the assignment so that I know that you did it, and you do not need to send me a picture or anything else um, for today's assignment. And I will see you guys next week.